We've reached Act 2, Egypt. We have a whole new batch of bosses and monster and frequents to farm. The monsters in Act 2 aren't much harder than Act 1. Things will start to get noticeably harder in Act 3 and significantly harder in Act 4. So it's a good idea to get geared up now before moving on to Act 3. This is also a good time to start packing situational gear, especially for resistances. The first boss you will encounter in Act 2 is Scarabius. He does massive poison damage. So if your poison resistance is low, swap out some of your regular items for poison resist items. It will make this fight much easier. The first monsters you will face in Act 2 are Jackalmen. You will find lots of these throughout Egypt. They do drop monster in frequency, so let's take a look at them. They drop items for both caster and melee classes. The Jackal's Harness and Wrist Guard are probably the two best items. All of the items are very rare, especially when you consider the hundreds of Jackalmen you will kill on a normal playthrough. I didn't find any of these items on my current playthrough. If you do want to farm them, any place with Jackalmen camps will do. But I would probably recommend Fayum, just because it's close to a prime Dune Raider farm spot, so you could do both at the same time. I mentioned earlier, the first boss of Act 2 is Scarabius. He can be found in the Rakitus Library. He does have a majestic boss chest, although it doesn't seem to have as good a loot table as some of the other Act 2 bosses. Even so, whenever I come through here, I make several farming runs from the nearest Rebirth Fountain. I made five runs this time. I only got one green item and some Relic Shards. In the first fight, I only had 5% poison resistance, so a direct hit of his poison took about half my health, and slowed me significantly. After that, I put on some extra poison resist gear. I used a Sentinel's Helm with 13% poison resist I got from the Gorgons, and added a pristine plumage for 20% more poison resistance. He was much easier after that. Moving on to Reptilians. They only have two monster in frequency, but they're pretty good. Overseer's Mantle has plus one to Storm Nimbus and increased lightning damage. Overseer's Crest has plus two to Earth Enchantment and increased fire damage. This is the item I'm looking for. I'm using Earth Enchantment to supplement the damage of my throwing knives, so this would be a perfect fit for this build. I'm going to show you an absolute gold mine of a farm spot. It's just a short run from the Lower Nile portal. There is something I forgot to mention in the last video, and it's very important to note. Quest-related monsters have increased drop chances for rare items. You can identify quest-related monsters by the purple lettering in their name, and they also have a glowing light around them. The Arachnos I farmed in Fetid Lair were quest-related. This is why it's the best place to farm Deathweaver Monster and Frequence. These reptilians are for the plate of the Nile Farmer's Quest. There are only 12 of them, but I got a pile of green weapons out of here in a short time, mostly spears. A couple of times, I got four green weapons in a single run. That's an amazing drop rate. Even if you're not looking for a weapon upgrade, you can sell them for a good price. I had just spent 500000 to upgrade my caravan storage, and it left me broke, but I got most of my gold back farming this spot. One Overseer's Crest dropped, but no mantle. On to the Great Sphinx in Giza. This is where you'll find Pharaoh's Honor Guard. These are the stone men guarding the Hand of Balance, and also a majestic chest. It seems to have a pretty good loot table. Although it's not the best chest in Act 2, it's still worth farming. And there's a rebirth fountain nearby. Destroying the shrines spawn the Honor Guard. 
You can do them one at a time if you like. I usually spawn them all at once and use area effect skills. The stone men are much easier to kill for a rogue in Anniversary Edition as they are no longer completely immune to poison damage. I found a cartouche ring on this run which was an upgrade over what I had. Sand Queen Masika is one of the new bosses introduced in the Anniversary Edition. She was a random hero spawn in the original Titan Quest, so it looks like she got a promotion. You can find her in Sobek Plateau. To get to Sobek Plateau, go out the Gate of the Palm in Memphis and head toward Fayum. I made about five runs here and got a few green items and some relic shards. I would certainly recommend farming her. I also got a Deathwing helmet. It dropped off one of her spawned minions. This is the only monster infrequent dropped by Desert Hags, and it's very rare. I see about one in every ten playthroughs. The base stats are Dexterity and 5% chance to dodge attacks, but this one also had Fire Resistance, Energy, and Energy Regen. I put a relic on it and wore it, but a short time later I found a Shroud of Night, which has plus one to rogue skills, so I swapped out again. Nehebkau Scorpus King guards the Eye of Chaos in Fayum. He has two majestic chests, but they are without a doubt the worst boss chests in Act 2. Not only are the loot chances abysmal, the chests don't appear to have the proper amount of items in them. The first chest only had five items in it this time. That's about what you would expect from a bone pile. He's a fairly easy fight and a short run from the portal, but he's still not worth your time. I came back later to find double chests had spawned. There was only one green item out of four boss majestic chests, and not even one relic shard. I did five runs here overall. That's 12 chests, including the doubles, and only found that one green item. Certainly not loot worthy of a boss. Now that we've reached Fayum, it's time to focus on Dune Raiders and the Holy Grail of Act 2 Monster Infrequence, Eldritch's Bow. They also drop windswept armor pieces that have life leech retaliation. These might be useful for specialty builds, but the bow is the real prize here. It will always have attack speed and projectile speed, and as with all monster frequency, you could get additional stats if the random number generator is good to you. This bow will only drop off Dune Raider pillagers. These are the archers riding a hyena beast. You typically only find about two pillagers per Dune Raider camp, so unless you get really lucky, it will take a long time to find one. Let's take a closer look at this bow. I am currently using Horns of Cypress, which is a decent epic bow. It has almost the same requirements as the Eldritch's bow. I added an Essence of Prometheus Flame to the Eldritch bow, which fits well with Earth Enchantment. My damage per second went from 310 to 411 with the new bow. I could have gotten even more damage out of it if I used a Poison or Bleeding Charm. But I went with fire damage to help against the many monsters with high resistance to poison and bleeding. Iznu, the Dune Raider Chieftain in Fayum, has the best chance to drop the bow, because he is a quest-related monster. I would estimate that 50% of the Eldritch bows I found came from him. I'll show you a quick farming run if you want to try for this bow. You could just farm Isnu's camp if you like, but there are two other easy to reach places that are worth checking. After clearing Fayum, port over to Memphis. There are many Dune Raiders just inside and outside the southern exit. After you clear that area, port to Thebes. Head out the north exit. You'll find a couple of camps of Dune Raiders just a short ways along the path.
I am just going to briefly cover Mummy, Monster, and Frequence because they are not highly farmed items. This is ceremonial armor. It only drops from embalmed dead priests. The exhumed armor they usually wear looks exactly like the ceremonial armor. The priests are mostly found in the Valley of Kings tombs. On to some highly prized monster in frequence. Revenant Plate. This armor drops from Gilded Dead. Now I know I use the word rare a lot, but to say this armor is rare would be an understatement. I only recall ever seeing three pieces of this armor in over a thousand hours played. If you want these items, wait until Legendary. In Normal and Epic, they are all plus one to skills, but in Legendary, they are a plus two to all skills. Gilded Dead are found in several tombs in Valley of Kings. The quickest farm run would be the first tomb. It's close to the portal, and the Gilded Dead are close to the entrance of the tomb. Your best chance, however, is probably in Tomb of Khufu. After you open Khufu's sarcophagus to get his staff, four Gilded Dead will spawn as you leave the room. These are quest-related monsters, so they should have an increased drop chance for Revenant Plate. Now here's the secret. If you leave Khufu's staff on the ground, you can get these skeletons to spawn again and again as long as you leave the staff. If you take the staff, they will no longer spawn. The tombs in Valley of Kings are some of the best places to farm demon's blood. Vitality resistance is crucial Not late in the game. Be sure to kill all the Euronomous demons you encounter. On to the Telkin. He is the second to last boss in Act 2, and he probably has the best loot table in Normal. You can find him in Tomb of Ramses. He's not too difficult, just watch out for the rays of light he summons. They do massive fire damage. I made several runs, but didn't get anything better than green items and relic shards. If you were to spend an hour farming him, I'm sure you would find several blue items, many relic shards, and a few arcane formulas. The Sand Wraith Lord is the final boss of Act 2. He guards the portal to Babylon in the Temple of Hashepsut. He can summon minions and disrupt skills, but his damage per second doesn't seem very high. His chest has a mediocre drop rate. You would be much better off farming the Telkin. However, there is an exploit that will allow you to farm him very quickly if you have the right class skills. Travel back through the portal into his room. Some spells can be cast through the locked doors. I logged on an oracle to do this. Squall and Lightning Bolt can hit him and also the Lich King's attacks. Upon death, the doors will open, allowing you to loot the chest. I typically don't like to use exploits, but you can make your own choices. That's all for Act 2. Time to get to work on Act 3.